Welcome, YouTubers, to another episode in my Grammar Hero series. In today's video, we're going to be taking a closer look at factorials, which is a topic that frequently appears in the Mathematics Knowledge Subtest of the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, that is the ASVAB, as well as the PiCat. More specifically, uh, I'm going to use this first half of the video to give you an overview of what factorials are. And in the second half of this video, we're going to work on simplifying some factorial expressions. Once we get to the second part of this video, I want to encourage you to start pausing the video, attempting to work out these questions on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. As a reminder, you're not permitted to use a reference sheet or a calculator on the actual ASVAB or PiCat. So as you work your way through these practice problems, try not to make any use of those resources. So all that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get started with today's video. Unless you've taken a statistics class either in high school or college, many of you probably have a very vague idea as to what a factorial is. That said, don't fret. This topic is actually very, very easy to understand. But that said, let's take a look at uh, the definition of a factorial. And as you can see, it says the factorial of a non-negative integer n is the product of all positive integers equal to and less than n. Uh, mathematically, that looks like this. n and this exclamation point in mathematics is called a factorial. So n factorial is equal to n times all the positive integers less than n until you get to 1. And that's all there is to it. So in light of that, let's take a look at a few examples now. So for this first example, you can see that we have 3. Again, that exclamation point is called a factorial in math. So we have 3 factorial. According to the definition we just saw, we're going to take uh, our number n, which is 3 in this case, and we're going to multiply it by every positive integer less than 3 until we get to 1. So 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. And we can actually work this out. What is 3 times 2? 3 times 2 is 6. And what is 6 times 1? 6 times 1 is just 6. So in other words, 3 factorial is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. And when you work that out, that's equal to 6. So 3 factorial is equal to 6. All right, so what about 4 factorial? Again, according to our definition, uh, we take our number n, which is 4 in this case, and we're going to multiply it by all the positive integers less than 4 until we get to 1. So 4 factorial, in other words, is the same as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And as you know already, we can work this out. 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, and 24 times 1 is 24. So in other words, 4 factorial is the same as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which when we work that out is equal to 24. So 4 factorial is simply 24. All right, so hopefully you're picking this up by now. And if you want, you can pause the video and try to figure out what 5 factorial is. Uh, that said, I'm going to go ahead and work it out. Again, we start with uh, the number that we're given. We're given 5 in this case. And according to the definition of factorials, we're going to multiply that number by every integer less than it until we get to 1. So this is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And of course, we can work this out. Uh, 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. 120 times 1 is 120. Again, anything times 1 is just itself. So 5 factorial is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which of course is equal to 120. So 5 factorial is equal to 120. There is one thing you have to memorize. Uh, that is, you have to memorize that 0 factorial is equal to 1. Okay, so that's all there is to understanding factorials. All right, so uh, I included this chart here. 
just to show you that uh, when you work out uh, anything above fac 5 factorial, these are the values you get. Again, 6 factorial is 720. 7 factorial is 540. You don't have to memorize this chart. Again, as long as you know the definition of what a factorial is, you can find these numbers by doing the simple arithmetic there. So don't memorize this chart. I just wanted to show you what some common factorials look like. Now that we've defined factorials, let's take a look at something that's a little bit more difficult. That is, let's work on simplifying some factorial expressions. Again, at this point in the video, you may want to pause the video, attempt to work out these practice problems on your own, and then resume playing the video to check your solution. That said, as you're going to see in just a few minutes, nothing in this part of the video is going to be especially difficult. All right, so uh, with those things in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at this first question. We have 6 factorial over 3 factorial, and I'm going to get started by uh, copying this one off to the right here. Again, we have 6 factorial over 3 factorial. And we now know how to express 6 factorial. 6 factorial is the same thing as 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Likewise, we should know that we can express 3 factorial as 3 times 2 times 1. Now, previously, I would actually work this out, 3 times 2 times 1, and then I'd work out 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and then do this division. Well, uh, in order to solve these problems efficiently, we should realize that we can cross out corresponding values in our numerator as well as our denominator. That is to say, we can cross out these corresponding 3s, 2s, and 1s. And what does this problem become? It simply becomes this, 6 times 5 times 4. And that's much easier to work out. Again, uh, what is 6 times 5? Well, that's 30. And what's 30 times 4? Well, 30 times 4 is 120. And that's all there is to it. Again, 6 factorial over 3 factorial is 120. All right. Let's take a look at another example now. All right, so for number two, you can see that we have five factorial over two factorial times three factorial. All right, so let me copy this one off to the right here. We have five factorial over uh, two factorial times three factorial. And we now know how to express factorials. Again, five factorial is the same as five times four times three times two times one. And likewise, we know 2 factorial is the same thing as 2 times 1. And that's times 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. All right, rather than working all of this out, which would take up a lot of your time, especially if you're taking the ASVAB or PiCAT, what you want to do is cross out corresponding values in your numerator as well as your denominator. And it should be pretty clear that we can cross out these corresponding 3s, 2s, and 1s. So this becomes 5 times 4 over 2 times 1. And I'm pretty sure most of you can work that out. 5 times 4 is 20. 2 times 1 is 2. And uh, 20 divided by 2 is 10. And just like that, we simplified this uh, expression here. 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial is simply 10. And that's all there is to that one. Let me go ahead and erase this so we can get our next problem set up here. All right, so uh, number three says 52 factorial over 50 factorial. Again, I'm going to start by copying this problem off to the right here. So we have uh, 52 factorial over 50 factorial. And uh, this one's a little bit tricky because uh, we know 52 factorial is the same thing as 52 times 51 times 50 times 49 times 48 times 47 and so on and so forth until we get to 1. Well, we're not going to write all that out in this case. Instead, we're going to use some logic here. 
and we're going to write this one like this. Again, 52 factorial is the same thing as 52 times 51. And then what's left? Well, we have 50 factorial left. Again, 50 factorial is the same as 50 times 49 times 48 times 47. All right, so I expressed 52 factorial as 52 times 51 times 50 factorial. And I'm going to just bring over this 50 factorial in the denominator here. And what's that going to enable me to do? It's going to enable me to cross out these 50 factorials. And this simply becomes 52 times 51. And we can all work that out. Again, uh, that's too big for me to do in my head, so I'm going to do it off to the side. We have 52 times 51. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. 5 times 1 is 5. Before we start multiplication with this 5, we have to bring in a 0 placeholder. 5 times 2 is 10. Bring down a 0, carry a 1. 5 times 5 is 25 plus 1 is 26. Let's add these together now. Uh, 2 plus 0 is 2. 5 plus 0 is 5. 6 plus nothing is 6. And 2 plus nothing is 2. So this is uh, 2,652. In other words, uh, 52 factorial over 50 factorial is 2,652. All right. And again, you did not want to write out 50 times 49 times 48 times 47. You'd be there forever. All right, so that's an example of that one. Number four says 10 factorial over 2 factorial times 8 factorial. So let's go ahead and get started by copying this one off to the right here. Again, we have 10 factorial over 2 factorial times uh, 8 factorial. And again, you have to start thinking about the fact that some of these factorials will get big and you don't want to write out uh, a complete factorial when it's very, very big. So let's start by taking a look at 10 factorial. We should know that 10 factorial is the same as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That said, we don't want to write all that out. So uh, I'm going to express this like this. 10 times 9 times 8 factorial. All right. And of course, that's over 2 factorial times 8 factorial. Well, as we just did, we can cross out our corresponding values in our numerator and denominator. That is to say, we can cross out these corresponding 8 factorials. So this becomes 10 times 9 over. Now let's express that 2 factorial. Again, 2 factorial is the same thing as 2 times 1. And now this problem becomes very, very easy. Uh, 10 times 9 is 90. 2 times 1 is simply 2. And 90 divided by 2 is 45. Uh, you should be able to work that one out mentally. But that said, I'll work it off to the side very quickly for you. Again, we can read fractions as long division by reading them like this. 90 divided by, that's a division bar in addition to being a fraction bar, divided by 2. We start by asking ourselves, how many times does 2 go into 9 without going over? That's going to be 4 times, given that 2 times 4 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1, drop down or 0. How many times does 2 go into 10 without going over? Of course, that's 5 times. 2 times 5 is 10, and we have no remainder. All right, so that's how we got 45. So to answer this question, 10 factorial over 2 factorial times 8 factorial is 45. All right. And I know I said there was four practice problems, uh, but I also included a bonus in this video. So as we can see, the bonus question in this video says 5 factorial times 4 factorial. Uh, so let's start by copying it off to the right here. We have 5 factorial times 4 factorial. Again, we know 5 factorial is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And this is going to be multiplied by 4 factorial, which is the same as 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Again, 
Some of you might know that 5 factorial is 120 and 4 factorial is 24. That said, if you're taking the test and you forget that, uh, you can always work these out the long way. Again, 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120. 120 times 1 is just 120, so this becomes 120 times, and what is 4 factorial? Again, if you didn't memorize what it was, you can always work it out the long way. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 2 is 24. 24 times 1 is just 24. And now I'm going to have to work this off to the side so as not to make any mistakes here. We have 120 times 24. And we start by asking ourselves what uh, 0 times 4 is. That's 0. 2 times 4 is 8. 1 times 4 is 4. Before we start multiplication with this 2, we have to bring in a 0 placeholder. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 1 is 2. Let's add these together now. 0 plus 0 is 0. zero plus, 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 plus 4 is 8. And 2 plus nothing is 2. Uh, so this is 2,880. In other words, 5 factorial times 4 factorial is 2,880. All right, so that's that one. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And as usual, you're more than welcome to leave feedback in the comment section below. Can't stress this enough. Uh, you have to understand factorials to be successful on the ASVAB. Uh, this topic does frequently show up on the test. If you want to help my channel out, uh, please consider subscribing to it. But on that note, I'm going to go ahead and cut you loose. Konnichiwa.